For more than a century, pepper has been strongly associated with Malaysia. Today, pepper is one of the main agricultural products of the country, with Sarawak, the land of the hornbills, being the biggest contributor. Pepper and hornbills land is a fragrant addition to any dish and has made a name for itself in the global spice market and has become a household brand. Today's story begins with one regular and humble farmer in Sarawak named Mong. Mong is in his 60s and has been planting pepper for half his life. Together with Mong, we will discover the Borneon treasure of pepper. Saya dari rumah Mong dari Wong Kerdat, entah bayi dulau. Rasa saya dari Sungai Masir, Nawi. Saya Start berkebun dari bapa dengan mak sudah mak bapa meninggal saya sambung itu kebun mak dengan bapa saya bertanam lada dekat ada tiga puluh tahun. He is bringing us to Jelau, a town where eighty percent of the population are pepper farmers. 20,000 people call Julau home and they are heavily reliant on the pepper industry. Julau is responsible for producing the largest amount of pepper in the state of Sarawak. Life here is simple yet complicated. Selling a bag of pepper ensures that a family will have full stomachs for a fortnight, but a lot of work goes into creating every ounce of pepper. Pepper in Hornbill's Land, Episode 1, Treasure. Beyond Jalau is the home of Mong and Tabai, the heart of Borneo. Mong lives in a longhouse, also known as Rumah Panjang, a traditional way of life where families from the same tribe live together. Consisting of six houses and 30 people, a small longhouse like this can produce up to 100 tons of pepper every single year, a significant amount in the Sarawakian pepper industry. Situated beside one of the finest and cleanest rivers on earth, the soil surrounding Mong's longhouse is rich and well suited for pepper planting. Kalau pasal ada, memang dari kecil. Boleh dikatakan bila kita sudah dapat uh, buat kerja, memang arwah datuk saya memang dia tak suka tengok orang duduk di rumah. Memang dari kecil, memang memang kita sudah ada tanam lada sendiri dari arwah datuk. Kalau tak silap saya, tidak sampai 200 pokok tahun 1978. Kebanyakan kami dekat sini memang semuanya pengusaha lada lah. Uh, saya lama sudah bekerja kebun lada sejak saya uh, tahun 1988. Saya habis SPM tu saya terus meneruskan kerja bapa saya lah menggantikan dia sebab dia sudah tua. Sampai sekarang lah saya buat kerja kebun lada. Dari bapa saya dulu memang susah lah dia buat kerja tu semua dia pakai pakai kerja lama lah tidak macam sekarang sebab sekarang kan semua pakai mesin macam tu semua pakai peralatan moden lah tidak macam dulu dia macam buat 
proses pertama dia buat sendirilah ambil macam kami iban cakap tiang tu dia ambil dari hutan tu angkat sampai dekat kebun pikul tu ikut karan jauh lah macam dekat hutan tu sampai sejam dua jam dia angkat itu tapi dibandingkan macam sekarang walaupun dia agak jauh tapi kita dekat juga lah pakai kereta lebih senang lah sekarang dibandingkan dengan dahulu. Subak nanam amat susah lah ban kami subak empai bisi jalai agak betul dengan air. Utai kapal yang pedih sebab menua kami ditok nya bab ngambil baja ban menua kami jauh subak empai dah terjalai dia tu. Habisnya mai mimit lah ban jalai dah bisi. Bisi nya subak ngena ngesan ke kami san undan ngena perahu. Ya kena ulih mai wang undan engkau ke 10 bi ulih ke. 500 kilo kena ulih undan. Mong's ancestors used to ferry the harvest by boat along the Entebai River or Sungai Entebai. Thanks to the Malaysian pepper board, they finally have roads to move the harvest more efficiently. Though the road may be bumpy and imperfect, but Mong and his family are eternally grateful for the Malaysian pepper board's assistance in providing them with a more efficient mode of transportation compared to when his forefathers were using longboats, which was a grueling an unforgiving undertaking with long hours and small yields. Mula aku nanam lada, aku lalu ngentak ketuat, udah ngentak ketuat, dahnya aku lalu nanam lada. Jadi lada ketanam aku itu, nyak seminggu emas. Jadi udah ya aku nanam ya, ya start sampai keluar ke buah. Ma Bisik tara tiga tahun. Dengar udah ya aku ngambil buah dengar aku lalu ngagak lada putih ngau oh, lada celum. Udah nyak aku lalu spray ya ngak ngena racun sekor jaga bunga ya lalu baca ngena cap MPB. Jadi racun serangga aku ngena lalu ngena metapos. Mong will now show us the very first step of pepper planting. Jadi dia tu aku nyangkul kat nanam ya. Mula aku nanam tu. Nilai aku agak em ketau. Apa aku satu cukup mana di medak gaya tanah itu ya. Beka beka baja kompos dah. Ha, tu tu aku nanam ha, cara nanam ni berketuk ya. dah tembuk tanam lalu tuduang hmm. ha, tuduang ngai dia kena panas dia kena panas dia lalu layu juang dia mati hmm. udah ada tuduang ketuk sampai ya uh, for the first three years, the pepper plant will not bear any berries, but it will need to be guarded diligently. The pepper farmers will check each plant carefully for signs of disease or an infestation as that could spell trouble. Three years might sound like a long duration, but good things come to those who wait. When the plant matures, it will yield pepper annually between the months of May and July. Time is of the essence when it comes to harvesting pepper. Harvest too soon and the pepper will be discarded. Harvest too late and the berries will rot. If they fail to harvest the pepper, before it over ripens, Mong and his family will suffer a great loss. While harvesting, they remove the unripened berries to ensure that they will ripen at the same time during the next harvesting season. One of the tools 
tools they use to harvest pepper is a wooden ladder designed by themselves. Propped up by just one wooden pole, it is much more practical when navigating the hilly landscape of their pepper plantation. But it is also much more dangerous. During the monsoon season, it can get quite treacherous. Balance is paramount. Bees are also a common but dangerous enemy to pepper farmers. The result of their hard work and dedication is world-class recognition of fine quality pepper found only in the land of hornbills. Many of us may never know how tedious it is to grow this delicious and well-loved seasoning. Despite having to go through such lengths, it will be all worth it as its spice and aroma is a satisfaction unlike any other. After harvesting, the green pepper berries will need to undergo an arduous process to make it fit for consumption. The most traditional method employed by some Dayak farmers in Sarawak is foot trampling. By applying pressure and friction onto the berries, they will separate the pepper berries from its spikes or stems, which are then thrown away. Technology has made this process much easier. The pepper separation machine, believed to be a Scottish invention, offers farmers the ease of separating the peppercorns with a thresher. While they are motorised machines, many farmers are unable to afford it, opting to invest in the less expensive manual thresher instead, which operates with a manual hand roller. Buah kumpul di kebun, baik, luingin kita. Dunya, lalu kita memproses ya dah, nganginjen ngerai kiri tangkai. After the pepper berries are freed from the clusters, they are now ready to be turned into black pepper. The berries are sun-dried under the sizzling hot Borneo sun for up to two weeks, depending on the intensity of the sun. The Borneo Islands tropical climate makes it the perfect natural oven to dry the peppercorns. While it looks simple, it is a time and energy consuming process. The pepper berries need to be spread evenly and turned frequently to ensure that they are properly dry. Pepper berries should be dry until they are black and wrinkled and have a final moisture content of 8 to 10% to prevent the growth of mold. Once dry, the black peppercorn goes through another cleaning before it is suitable to be manufactured into black pepper products. 
Uh, mesin ini uh, mesin pengipas pakai denimo. Sebelum ada mesin pengipas ni, mula-mula kami dulu pakai iban cakap ini capan. Lepas tu kami pakai uh, mesin yang kedua kami pakai tangan. Lepas tu sudah ada mesin yang baru ini yang pakai denimo. Kami tidak guna yang mesin kedua itu sebab kami rasa benda, uh, pakai barang yang lama macam ini susah. Kalau sudah pakai ini dalam masa 10 minit kami rasa sakit belakang, sakit pinggang. Lepas tu kami biar tidak pakai ini lagi. Kami pakai mesin yang kedua dan pakai mesin yang ketiga yang lebih moden ini ya pakai denimo. Pakai mesin yang menggunakan denimo ini memang menggunakan masa yang cepat dan kita memproses lada pun dia lebih bersih dari pakai yang mesin yang kedua yang menggunakan tangan. Besides producing black pepper, Mong and his family also produces white pepper, which is much more valuable. The harvested berries are stored and bagged before being soaked in the river. Here comes the challenging part, finding a suitable spot along Sungai Entabai. Mong and his family are determined to use the purest waters to maintain the quality of pepper in Hornbill's land. This will also ensure that their white pepper will be placed at a better grade and sold at a higher price. The family will now travel by boat in search of cleaner waters for their precious white pepper. This can sometimes be dangerous due to the rain. And accidents may happen. Pepper farmers take great risks on a daily basis in order to produce white pepper for the enjoyment of consumers around the world.
searching, Mong and his family have now found a suitable spot. The rainforest is denser and lusher here, with crystal clear waters, which is even suitable for direct consumption. The sparkling clean waters might be one of the reasons why Sarawak and pepper is among the most popular spices in the world. A rare gem, the purest waters found in the Entabai River. Jadi aku ngagak lada putih ba menua kerat itu laban lada putih tu cukup mana air tu cukup bersih nyale pasa lada kami dari Sarawak kualiti mana harga ya lebih tinggi dari negara Bukai. Ya tu aku masuk lada ba air ke cukup bersih nyale lada aku tu nyale mana hamat ma kira burak ba kami ba wong kedat itu. Jadi aku dia tu ngirah buah lada putih. Jadi ketuk ku cara kami ngagak lada putih. Udah kami ngirah kenya kami lalu muai ya, muai abuak ya ke udah dah besi kami. Ah ketuk gaya ya. Kami ngagak lada putih kami yang rendam ya sampai 14 hari baru tu boleh dia cuci baru boleh jadi lada putih. Uji air maya kami ngagak lada putih air ya nak mana tau ke keruah. Jadi lada putih tu ndak berapa putih nyale kualiti ya bisi kurang tinggi ari bakaya air ke ndak bersih. Ya. They will park here and soak the pepper berries for 10 to 14 days to soften the pericarp or the shell of the peppercorn. Similarly, the peppercorns will need to be removed from the spikes and spread out and left to dry in the sun. Mong and his family have now succeeded in putting the finest white pepper on the table. This high-quality pepper came from the back-breaking and often dangerous practices that make up pepper planting. It isn't the farm that makes the farmers, but the love, hard work, dedication, and character. However, their ultimate goal is to preserve the beliefs and responsibilities which have been passed down from generations, ensuring that tradition doesn't die. The journey of pepper in Hornbill's land does not stop here, but persists through the export trade, the culinary industry, and the dining table. In the next episode, we shall witness the pepper in Hornbill's land being employed in the skilled hands of local chef Sim, who also happens to be a popular personal trainer. <laughs>